The last thing we're going to talk about is how the media changes things. So far, we've been thinking about a disk drive, which has all these physical properties. What most of us have in our computers today, and what we have on our EC2 nodes, and what will be in most future computers, at least foreseeable future, is not a device like this. It's a device like this. It's a solid state drive. We have a lot of things on flash memory. This has a lot of advantages over a disk. The idea for flash memory goes back to this paper. This was 1987. There was lots of memory that you could reflash. So EEPROMs, you could rewrite what's in memory, but you needed a special device to do it, and it took a lot of time to rewrite it. The big innovation with NAND flash was a way both to, to make the density higher, but to make it so you could rewrite just a small part of the time. You don't have to rewrite the whole memory every time you rewrite it. The way this works, and uh, we're not going to get into real electrical details because I don't understand them that well, but there are two things that are actually important about this when you think about building file systems on top of Flash. So we do want to talk a little bit about how it works. What it's based on is you have this oxide layer. What that can do is store electrons, and it stores them in a very permanent way. So even when you take the power off, the electrons that are stored in that oxide layer stay where they are. You have a way to charge that layer. If you charge that layer, it's going to fill up with electrons. Once it gets more than halfway full, this charge now goes through, and you get a different value out. It's sort of like a capacitor, but it's much more robust and stable. It's not leaking electrons the way a capacitor does. Once it's charged, it stays charged for a very long time. So it's a very stable way to store that bit. The convention is when it's not charged, the value is a 1, and when it's charged, the value is a 0. Why that's the convention, I don't know. You could certainly pick it to represent either way. But that actually turns out to be fairly important that they picked it to be the opposite of what we would naturally, naturally pick. OK, so that's how Flash works. It's non-volatile, so it preserves the state for a really long time. It's really not forever, but for long enough that we trust our devices to use it. It is solid state, and all solid state means is there are no big moving parts. The only things that move are at the scale of electrons. So that means it's quiet. That means it should be less vulnerable to things like being dropped than a disk drive would be. And it's fast, not compared to SRAM, but fast compared to disk. We're talking, and the time to read all cells is really close to the same. The writing time can vary quite a bit, but the time to read is, is fairly stable. It's orders of a few thousand nanoseconds compared to hundreds of thousands or millions of nanoseconds on a disk. To put that in our summary, we're orders of magnitude faster than a disk, which is the big reason people like flash storage. The cost is orders of magnitude more. So even today, flash memory still costs a lot more per bit than a disk drive does. So the big challenges of trying to build a file system using flash. Writing, if you go from a 0 to a 1, requires erasing the whole block. So you can do a write that turns a 1 into a 0. And if you remember the how it works slide, we turn a 1 into a 0 by adding some electrons, by storing some electrons in that oxide layer. And we can do that just by charging it. To go from a 0 to a 1 requires basically clearing a whole block. You've got to do something special to clear out those electrons, and that's good. right? If you didn't have to do something special, it wouldn't be a robust, stable storage. But the fact that you have to do something special means it's very expensive to go from a 0 and 1. And you've got to do it a big block at a time. You can't just change one bit or one byte. You've got to erase a whole block to go from a 0 to a 1. The other kinds of properties it has, it's stable, but it wears out. So if you keep rewriting a cell after a fairly small number of bit flips, it no longer works. So you get about up to a million with good modern fast storage. But often it's, it's as low as a few thousand. The other thing that happens that makes things complicated, when you read a cell, it actually disturbs the nearby cells. It doesn't make them lose their values right away. But if you do many reads in the same place, the cells nearby might lose their value. So you've got to be careful that you don't read the same cell too many times. But the good thing is that there's no seek time. So some of the things that are complicated for building a disk-based file system that performs well, now are simple. Because all blocks cost the same amount of time to access. What are the things that we want to do to design a file system for flash memory? If we've got this property that erasing is really expensive, what do we want to do? Yes. Yeah, so we want to avoid erasing. Erasing is expensive. So instead of erasing an old block, 
we want to just keep writing new ones. We'd like to never have to do any unnecessary erasing. The fact that we changed the value of some file, the contents of some file, well, that doesn't mean you have to erase and rewrite what was there. We can just put it somewhere else. The file system that does this was actually not originally designed around Flash. It's originally designed to get better performance from disks, because not erasing on disk was actually a good thing as well. 